Citroen's DS3 Cabrio is anything but a conventional convertible. But then, that's exactly why you might buy one. You don't get a full-blown folding roof, but then neither do you get the usual compromises in rear seat and luggage space, and there are no speed restrictions on soft top use. If you thought you could neither justify or afford a cabriolet, then this car aims to make you think again. The small, affordable cabriolet. It's a lovely idea in principle. Inexpensive, open-roofed motoring for those rare occasions when the sun makes an appearance. In practice, though, there are often frustrating compromises to be made in a car of this kind. Here's one, though, that doesn't require you to make too many. Citroen's DS3 Cabrio. Let me explain. Wouldn't it be nice if a model of this sort didn't buffet you roof down and shimmy over bumps? Wouldn't it be neat if you could react instantly to the weather and retract its top at almost any speed? And wouldn't it be good if you could actually fit three people in the back if need be and more than a token amount of luggage? None of the cars which most readily come to mind as affordable open tops, say the Mini Convertible, the Fiat 500C or even the Mazda MX-5, can satisfy on all these counts. This one can. No, it's not a full-blown convertible, but then Citroen argues that to be a good thing, the resultant design better suited to enjoyment of our testing roads and changeable climate. Is it? We're going to find out. Now I can't really understand why anyone would criticise this car for not being a proper convertible. And if you did, then I'd wonder whether you'd really ever properly driven a small affordable four-seater cabriolet with a completely open soft top design, say a mini convertible for instance. Those that have will know that there simply isn't enough bulk in something as small as this to fully eradicate all the shimmies and shakes that have long afflicted cars of this sort. You don't feel them too much in a brand new model, but believe me, they get much worse as it grows older. All of which, in this part of the convertible market at least, for me makes this Citroen's retractable ceiling approach a much better way to go. On paper, you might be tempted to view this kind of folding soft top as little more than a giant sunroof, but in practice it's much more than that. True, you never get the full wind in the hair feeling that you would in a classic conventional cabriolet lacking these fixed side panels, but there's quite enough exposure to the elements in this fully open position to give you that real cabrio feeling, though buffeting is reduced because you're better hidden from the blustery conditions. I should also point out that as with any proper convertible, rearward vision with the roof down is pretty awful, hence the standard fitment here of rear parking sensors. My favourite feature though relates to the way, unique in my experience with convertible cars, that this roof allows you to instantly react to the conditions that uh, you're driving in. Say for example that you're roof down on a motorway in a rival Fiat 500C or Mini Convertible and the heavens suddenly open. Well, just as you would in pretty much any drop top, you're going to get wet. The Fiat's roof only operates at speeds below 37 miles an hour, while the Mini's only works below 20 miles an hour, which means in these cars that putting up the top either has to wait till you reach the next junction wet and frustrated, or you have to stop in a potentially dangerous position on the hard shoulder and wait for the roof mechanics to do their thing as the raindrops pound down on your head. With this Citroen, there's none of that. Press this little button on the overhead console and you can open or close the roof in just 16 seconds at any speed of up to 75 miles an hour. Now with the roof closed, refinement is near on as good as it is in the fixed top DS3. And when things brighten up a bit or you find yourself on a slower road, another jab on the roof button can open things up again to one of three fixed positions or anywhere you like in between. As the roof opens, a standard pop-up deflector at the front of the windscreen flips up to reduce turbulence in the cabin. This is a feature first introduced on the Mercedes E-Class Cabriolet, a car twice this one's price. And you can go further still by fitting an air deflector net. Enough on the roof, what's this car like to drive? 
vaguely sporting like a four-seater mini convertible or actually sporty like a two-seater mini roadster? Well, you probably won't be surprised if I tell you it's somewhere between the two. That's probably the right balance for the majority of buyers, but it's a little frustrating if you're an enthusiast, for the whole thing could actually have been really great were it not for the slightly vague steering. Almost everything else, after all, is spot on. Check off a great driving position, loads of grip, a decent ride and handling balance that keeps rolling check through the corners without crashing over the bumps in town. Oh, and a slick manual gearbox with six speeds on this turbo THP model. Oh yes, engines. I was coming to those. Thanks to this Cabrio's very marginal weight increase over a standard DS3, the performance figures on offer here are pretty much the same as they are in the ordinary fixed top version. Here, as I've said, I've got the top petrol THP 155 variant, that figure designating a horsepower output just a little down on that of this same 1.6 litre petrol turbo engine when fitted to a rival mini convertible Cooper S. No matter, this DS3 is still more than acceptably rapid, rest to 62 miles an hour occupying 8.2 seconds en route to 132 miles an hour. If you don't need to go quite that quickly, then you can get the same engine with 35 brake horsepower less in the normally aspirated VTI 120 model, a car that manages 62 miles an hour in 9.9 .9 seconds on the way to 118 miles an hour. But of course, many potential buyers will be largely disinterested in figures like these, prioritising style rather than speed. For these people, there's a more lethargic four-speed automatic version of the 1.6-litre VTI or an entry-level three-cylinder 82-brake horsepower 1.2-litre VTI petrol variant that's impressively efficient but takes nearly 15 seconds to get to the 62-mile-an-hour benchmark. That leaves only the sole diesel option offered from launch, the E-HDI 90 Airdream, with a 1.6-litre HDI unit game enough to propel the car to 62 miles an hour in 12 and a half seconds. You'd be forgiven for not realising this to be a cabrio at first glance. After all, the profile of this model is identical to that of its fixed top counterpart, which means you get the same cool shark fin B-pillar, uh, the same floating two-tone roof and the same sculpted front M with its distinctive LED light signature. Unique to this model are these lovely 3D rear light clusters made up of 31 LEDs with semi-reflecting mirrors. What you don't get is a lot of unwanted extra ballast. Rival small cabrios usually have up to 100 kilograms of it to try and stop the body shaking over bumps, something this DS3 simply doesn't do, thanks to these fixed side panels. What stiffness is lost to the canvas top has been regained by replacing the hatch model's flimsy rear parcel shelf with steel braces that have added a mere 25 kilograms to the overall curb weight. The soft top design itself, a joint effort between Citroen and specialist Webasto, is a bit more complicated than it looks, made up of over 180 different parts and electrically operated by a button on the overhead console that works to three main settings, intermediate, horizontal and total, all of which impressively are accessible at any speed of up to 75 miles an hour. Prodding the button once will slide the canvas back so it concertinas like a busker's accordion over the rear screen. If you continue to press the button, that screen will hinge forward to lie on the parcel shelf before the folded canvas sandwich motors back to take its place. As with the folding tops provided by most rivals, you'll find that when retracted, this one almost totally blocks rearward vision, hence the standard parking sensors. The roof acrobatics take only 16 seconds from start to finish and when the whole thing's open there's a pop-up wind deflector that springs out of the top roof rail to quell the worst of the turbulence. Of course, when you do have the roof down, you don't want it to take up so much space at the back that there's no room for people or packages. In this DS3 it doesn't. Take rear cargo space, accessible via a cantilevered boot lid that rises neatly outwards and upwards in a circular motion that means you can open it even when parked close to obstructions. 
It's unfortunate that once it is open, the aperture available, as you can see, is pretty small, though actually the capacity on offer is greater than it first appears. 245 litres in all, just 40 litres less than you get in the ordinary hatch version. That's 30% more than you get in a rival Fiat 500C and twice as much as you'd find on a rival Mini Convertible. Plus, you can extend it by folding down the same 60-40 split folding rear bench you'd find on the DS3 hatch, revealing up to 980 litres. Even more impressive, given the size of this car, is the rear seat space on offer. Now, getting into the back isn't quite as easy as it would be on a full-blown soft top like a mini convertible because you have to duck under this roof pillar as you would in any three-door hatchback. Once you're there, though, there's an unusual bonus. This is the only model in its class and one of the very few convertibles you can buy that can actually take three people across the back seat, which for a family man like me with three children suddenly opens up potential ownership of this kind of car. I simply couldn't have considered a drop top before. True, space is fairly tight back here, but it's okay for short journeys and fine for kids. At the wheel, you get the same high quality cabin that's done so much to promote sales of the standard DS3 hatch, with its piano black finishes and cool white lighting. The instruments are set into a trio of circular dials in a motif that appears again in the round clusters of the ventilation controls on a centre console that you can colour match to your own personal choice. With the exception of an armrest that slightly impedes the handbrake, the control layout is pretty faultless with an upmarket feel and a small grippy leather covered steering wheel that feels good to hold. Now, you can expect to pay somewhere in the 15 to 20,000 pound bracket for your DS3 Cabrio. So you're looking at a 2,400 pound premium over the fixed top version that many will assume this car is at first glance. Most Cabrio sales will be accounted for by either 1.2 or 1.6 litre VTI petrol versions. And there's a 2,400 pound premium to go from one to the other. At the top of the range, a £20,000 budget is required for the most desirable THP 155 turbocharged petrol model, this car. The single 90 brake horsepower 1.6 litre diesel variant that was offered at launch is pitched just above the two mainstream petrol variants, requiring a budget of around £18,000. As for rivals, well, there aren't too many these days in the affordable drop top sector. Cars like the Vauxhall Tigra, the Ford Streetcar and the Renault Wind are long gone. So what else remains? The most obvious two rivals that come to mind are Fiat 500C and the Mini Convertible. Though both are more cramped at the rear where they can only take a couple of people and about half as much luggage. In the Fiat's case, that's because it's based on a much smaller, much cheaper city car design, so it can undercut this Citroen by two to three thousand pounds, depending on the variant that you're looking at. Like this DS3, the 500C isn't a full-blown convertible, retaining the roof pillars and sharing the same kind of concertinaing folding fabric top. If that's not good enough and you want a proper fully retracting soft top, then probably only the Mini Convertible will suit. Petrol buyers will find that either base Mini 1 or top Cooper S versions of that car will cost around £1,000 more than either base 1.2 or top turbo 1.6 litre versions of this DS3. But the Mini provides a bit more performance in each case. Your call. It's the same when it comes to diesel power. The Citroen offers it slightly more affordably than a comparable soft top Mini, but offers less power. The volume sales in both model lineups, though, are served by exactly the same engine. A 1.6 litre normally aspirated petrol unit you'll find in both a drop top Mini Cooper and in a DS3 Cabrio VTI 120, pitched at the same kind of £17,500 price. Beyond these two rivals, well, there isn't much. Peugeot's aging metal folding roof 207cc shares the same engines and much the same kind of pricing as this car. But the sheer bulk of its retractable hardtop structure inevitably compromises both practicality and handling. 
Other options? Well, for this kind of money, you can just about get yourself the feeblest 1.2-litre version of a Volkswagen Beetle Cabriolet, if all you want to do is look good. Or a base 1.8-litre Mazda MX-5 sports car, if all you want is a tiny two-seater roadster. But most versions of these two cars sell in the pricier 20 to 25,000 pound bracket, where you'll find family hatch convertibles like Volkswagen's Golf Cabriolet, Renault's Megane CC, and Peugeot's 308 CC. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a DS3 Cabrio that you really want, then the deal might well be sealed if Citroen can offer you a decent level of standard equipment as part of the price of your chosen variant. And by and large, you shouldn't be disappointed. Though the base model doesn't include air conditioning, all the other variants have it. And of course, every model comes with electric operation for this folding fabric roof that's central to the design of this car. Other standard kit across the range? Well, that runs to front fog lamps, 3D LED rear lights, dark tinted rear windows, sports suspension, rear parking sensors, cruise control with a speed limiter, and a decent quality six speaker CD stereo. You've to stretch to this top trim level for Bluetooth connectivity though, which comes as part of Citroen's upgraded connecting box hi-fi system. As for options, well, apart from Citroen's integrated eMyWay satellite navigation setup, the major one is probably the four-speed automatic gearbox. You can only specify on the 1.6-litre VTI variant for an extra £1,000. Other than that, as with most cars of this kind, there's a huge scope for personalization, starting with three different roof designs. You get the standard black, this moon dust gray, which features the DS logo, and so-called infinite blue, with fabric that weaves in different colored threads of blue and violet, each reacting differently to the light. Beyond the roof, there are plenty of other ways to make this Citroen your own with numerous finishes for the mirrors and rubbing strips, different wheel colours, a range of different dashboard shades, uh, the option of aluminium drilled foot pedals and a wide choice of gear knobs. Whichever bodywork colour you choose, you even get a matching key fob. Safety equipment runs to twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus Isofix child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control. There's also the option of Citroen's award-winning E-Touch emergency and assistance system that in a crash will automatically alert the emergency services and tell them exactly where you are. Could be a lifesaver. The engineers behind this car focused on efficiency and minimizing weight during the design process, with the result that this DS3 Cabrio is just 25 kilograms heavier than the fixed top hatchback it's based upon. Typically, convertibles are around 100 kilograms more than their equivalent hatchback versions. As a result, the running cost returns of this car are barely any different from those of the hatch version, which means that even the thirstiest of the DS3 Cabrio models will return nearly 50 miles to the gallon on the combined fuel economy cycle. In other words, you're never going to be saddled with something especially expensive to run. Best of the bunch is the EHDI diesel, of course, which wears Airdream badges that denote especially impressive returns. 78.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 95 grams per kilometre of CO2. Almost as noteworthy is the entry-level three-cylinder 1.2-litre VTI 82 petrol model, which manages 57.6 miles to the gallon and 112 grams per kilometre of CO2. Beyond these two variants, you'll pay a bit more to keep your car on the road, but the figures aren't excessive. Both normally aspirated and turbocharged manual 1.6-litre petrol variants return 47.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out around 136 grams per kilometre of CO2. I should point out, though, that if you opt for the 1.6-litre VTI automatic, those returns take a bit of a hit, falling to 40.9 miles to the gallon and 154 grams per kilometre. There's a gear efficiency indicator on the dash to try and help owners get as close to those figures as possible in normal day-to-day -day motoring. 
Insurance can sometimes be a bit of an issue with convertibles, but in this case, the groupings aren't much different to those of the DS3 hardtop model. That means an affordable entry-level Group 10 for the base VTI 82, but then that rises to 16 for the VTI 120, 20 or 21 for the diesel, and 23 for this top THP 155 turbo petrol model. And residual values? Well, on the standard DS3 hatch, these have held up very nicely, far better than non-DS series Citroen models can manage, so there's no reason why this Cabrio shouldn't expect similarly sturdy retention figures. We live in a country where it can rain for 200 days in a year. Even if you can make a rational argument for owning a convertible in such a climate, it might be difficult to justify carting around the heavy, bulky cabrio roof that such a car will need. A top that, when folded, will minimise both boot space and rear passenger room. With this DS3 Cabrio, though, the downsides have been minimised. Here's a convertible that makes real sense for the part of the world we live in. Of course, it's not designed to suit someone really intent on getting the full al fresco experience. The looks don't shout convertible, and there are still door pillars to look past. But if you're okay with that, and you just want to feel the sun once in a while without the wobbling bodywork, practical compromises, and awkward styling of most small cabriolets, then this car could be exactly what you're looking for.